Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Timon Show. Today I got my guest here, Casey. How's it going, Casey? It's going good. How are you doing? We're I'm doing all right. I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm also here with my dog. Casey's here with his daughter. So you you're gonna hear some stuff in the background. Don't mind it. It's it's fine. And it's always good to have a child guest on the show. Um. So uh, we just uh. I saw Deadpool recently. Casey saw Deadpool recently. It, it it just it just it's opening weekend just ended. It's it's a superb movie. We are gonna review Deadpool for you guys today. How's that sound? Yes. All right. Overall, Casey, we'll we'll get to some main points. Overall, what did you? How did you feel about the movie? Um, just as a whole. Just going into it, like, ex like trying to like take it to account, like everything you've seen in trailers and everything actually coming out of the movie, like two different things. But yeah, overall, I think uh, perfect execution. Ryan Reynolds knocking it out of target again because I don't know, he's he's Deadpool incarnate in my mind. Yeah, he totally um, is. Yeah, but however, uh, I would like to to state that like it's it's definitely not a movie for casual fans. Um, even for like the hardcore Deadpool movie fans, like it's 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 really not for them. It's, this this is definitely one of those movies that are just like made by people who actually love the comic books. Cause, yeah. Um, as a casual fan, like looking at it, you're you're just sitting there going like, what is going on? But everybody who actually picked up a comic book once or twice, they're just like, yep, that, that looks like a comic book movie. There's so much going on in the movie that, like, I was watching IMAX, and I was, like, sitting, like, right on the edge. And, like, so, like, it was so loud at some points, and, like, especially when they're doing dialogue during the action scenes, I couldn't hear a lot of the jokes. But then there's so much going on that, like, even if you're trying to pay attention and try to catch, like, every Easter egg or every joke, you're not going to because there's so much going on in it. And, like, I've I've recently watched some of the reviews and stuff on it, and, like, they they were, like, the, a lot of reviews or whatever, we caught some of the same stuff. They caught some stuff that I didn't catch, and they also didn't catch stuff that I caught in a lot of the reviews. So, like, there's there was a lot going on. Uh... It's so it was yeah it was so crazy um oh yeah this is definitely gonna be full of spoilers so if you haven't seen Deadpool yet <laughs> this is gonna be full of spoilers so we spoil the shit out of everything on my show so uh so now let's we'll take it there to the beginning the beginning was beautiful they instantly started trolling uh Wolverine and Origins and all that and or not Origins but uh, uh Logan um there was also uh how'd you feel about that. Casey. Yes. How'd you feel about that whole opening begin uh, opening sequence? Uh, uh, the the whole like explanation of him like going around like killing him back guys like I beautiful like it's such so much Deadpool it's like Deadpool everywhere yeah Deadpool mania I loved it totally loved it like it's like just like how true he is to his comic book like counterpart like it's it's really a beautiful thing to see on the screen it really is um and it it was it was doing so much with so little um in that whole opening scene and then uh and then they were just trolling the fuck out of like James Bond and John Wick in the credits like shortly after that was really fun uh, <laughs> and i was oh, I, I was oh. I was focused so much on the intro at the beginning that I was miss I missed like maybe like the good like a good portion of the cr of the opening credits because I was too busy watching what like what they were doing in the in this in the, on the movie I was missing some of the names for the credits that like directed by uh, the, the guys who shot John Wick's dog and stuff like that <laughs> like I caught I caught some yeah. of them but I did not catch them all and it, it was just, it was just really fun. Yeah, I haven't even seen that yet. 
it's 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 too much. It's, it's a great movie. I digress. Yeah, I have I have yet to see that one, but it's on my it's on my list of stuff to see and stuff to review. That's probably gonna be one of my later ones. I'm gonna be starting a new show with a buddy of mine where we just review movies, new and old. But but I might just I might stick with like a lot. I might still do movie reviews on this show. Um, but, but uh. So then on to the, on to the beginning, or the, the real beginning, when you just have uh, uh, Deadpool and Vanessa chilling. Uh, that was just so crazy that uh, they killed her off right in the beginning. And you, everyone was just like, what the fuck? And then they mentioned that in the credits. Or you're like, did they just kill her? <laughs> brought, yeah, yeah. Br- br- brought to you by... <laughs> Most people, but I'm very conflicted about it. Um, Vanessa, uh, as most like hardcore comic book fans would, would know, she she is the mutant uh, copycat who's uh, kind of like after Deadpool becomes Deadpool, they, they kind of entered a, a sort of love hate re- relationship, and uh, it, it kind of sucks that they don't delve into her having her superpowers and becoming uh, part of X Force and whatever, but. That, that's for another day, but um, I do love um how she becomes the the, the 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 dead loved interest. Like she becomes like her own embodiment of death. How yeah. Death is yeah. Like, the comic books, and that's a great thing. Like that's definitely like one of the things I love most about that movie. It's that better show that relationship. It's better than turning Red Skull into death, for sure. <laughs> uh, okay, definitely one of my most like. Um, well, we did get that whole post credit scene with, uh, Deadpool kind of fixing everything that went wrong in the movie. <laughs> He, he brought Peter W. back to life. He brought Vanessa back to life. Uh, he, he, he did a few things. Um, he killed, he killed Ryan Reynolds twice. Or he killed, he killed X-Men Origins Deadpool. He killed him. Then he killed Ryan Reynolds as he's signing the Green Lantern contract. So, uh... <laughs> I don't even think we can even call that version off. Deadpool. I think he was just a transformed Wade Wilson. I don't think he was really Deadpool. <laughs> and swords coming out of his arms, like where do you keep those? <sighs> yeah, when did when did Deadpool imagine. become Baraka from Mortal Kombat? With like I'm pretty sure what is a three foot blade hidden in his I would assume one foot forearm, like Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not gonna work. <laughs> Cause those were animadium swords, so and they're, so they're not gonna be any sort of bendy at all. Um, unless unless there was like a way where they like come out of your elbows and then you can just like bring them out through your. That'd be cool. I'd, I I want to see a character like that that has like so they can use their swords like both ways. I I think I think my favorite uh, claw type. For lack of a better term, in the Marvel Universe, would be Dakin. Um, definitely one of my favorite claw types. Two from the top, one from the bottom. Like great, great, like just just an interesting way to like show claws. Okay. Okay. No, that would I- be. I, I broke every bone in my left hand, and I tried to give I tried to ask my surgeon to give me Wolverine claws, and he wouldn't do it. And uh, <laughs> so I anyway, back to Deadpool. Back to Deadpool. Uh, so Deadpool's super pissed off that uh, Vanessa just died. He's on this mission 
to first he's on a mission to kill himself. That's where we. That's where the movie opens. Is Deadpool trying to kill himself because he's just completely uh, distraught. And, and the soundtrack for this movie was completely fantastic. Anytime they played a song, my whole theater was cracking up. And uh, oh yeah. <laughs> um. So now, so now Vanessa's dead. He's on the. Uh, he's 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 talking with the dude from uh, uh, Silicon Valley. Uh, T.J. Miller's character, I forget his name. Uh, yes, Weasel. <laughs> he's, he's all like, he's hanging out with him and uh, 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 Dopinder, and they're like, we gotta form, we gotta I'm form. I'm surprised they brought him back. Uh huh. I'm surprised they brought him back. Honestly, I guess he's one of those like, oh, we'll just do it for shits and gigs. He he's uh he's just like um uh. Michael Pena in the Ant Man series and stuff, you know, he's the he's the even though the whole movie's comedy relief, uh Doe Pender was kind of another comedy relief that or like that type of you know. Yeah, that that makes sense. So he was good to have around. Um and every time when uh, uh he's all like, I wanna join the X Force, I wanna be part of your team. <laughs> Uh, and then every time they turn him down, he just gets so mad. And uh, and and then when he com- and then he comes through at the end, they're like, "Yeah, dude, you're part of the team now." <laughs> it all worked out. So much, so much happened. Oh, my favorite part is when he gets cock blocked by uh, Peter. That was just that was just hilarious. <laughs> oh man, I love Peter. 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 Everyone, everyone thought he was gonna be Peter Wisdom, which is like this really badass dude that could throw dives and like do all sorts of other stuff. And it, we did not get Peter Wisdom at all. We just got Peter W. and uh, and his amazing Twitter post before the movie came out. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's, he's one of those like secret, great secret nugget characters that you yeah. can help. So Weasel and Deadpool put out an ad in like the newspaper, the internet, or whatever. Like we're, we're forming a team, or whatever. And everybody who co- shows up to audition for the team joins the team, gets to join the team. So you got uh, um, Terry Crews. I forget the, his character's name. Bedlam. Bedlam. You got uh, you got Shatterstar. You got uh, Brad Pitt playing the Vanisher. Um. Which you don't find out until he dies. Uh, like, The Vanisher was one of the greatest jokes on there. Then you got the dude who spits acid, uh, Saliva. I forget his name, too. Yeah, Zeitgeist. Yeah, Zeitgeist. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. And then, then, and then you got, of course, Domino, who came in and all, like stole the show in many parts of the movie. She was just amazing. Um... Uh, I forget the actress that plays her, uh, but she is, she really kicked ass. She brought a new spin on Domino, because Domino is usually, like, uh, a more gothic type character. And, uh, so when you get this version or whatever, who's just, like, ri- like, she's basically the luckiest person alive. She has the power to, uh, hmm. manipulate probability. And, uh, and... Uh, she, and she really owns it, you know, she's walking around like her shit don't stink and she can just get away with anything and like, and and we see it in the movie, it, it, it it totally works, she can just do whatever the fuck she wants and she just has fun with life, that's why she's probably not like a rich millionaire or whatever, she's more about just living life on the edge and, (laughs) I think, I think it's really more, uh, comparable to, um, uh, that one Harry Potter scene where he takes the, the the lucky juice, the lucky potion, yeah, and he's just like going around like, let's just see what happens, and if all this good luck happens to him. I think that's that's what Domino's power is like. She's kind of like California surfer boy, just like chill, bro, and just just stuff happens. Like holy crap, she got away with it. So he gets the X Force. He, they're, they're on the mission um they're in an airplane i don't know how they fuck they got an airplane 
<laughs> but they got an airplane. They're getting ready to parachute off. And, uh, right. And then, uh, that whole scene is, uh, they sort of parodied off of Iron Man 1 when he's listening to ACDC when they, when he jumps off the plane. They did the exact same scene. They're listening to ACDC when they jump off the plane. Uh, and everybody's warning Deadpool, like, dude, the wind. There's, like, a really high, uh, uh, wind going on right now. And he's all like, ah, whatever, dude, fuck it. And everybody's getting fucked up by the wind on their parachutes. They're flying all over the place. And this is when the entire X-Force dies. Just from some wind. <laughs> so whoever says Storm isn't shit, because all she does is summon wind and make shit rain. Oh my god, you're getting shit dead wrong. Like, this was just a small wind, like, it wasn't small, but it was just like a, an, a wind gust that can happen anywhere at any time. And it killed the entire X-Force. And, and in, in, in the trailers, we thought the X-Force was going to be doing some shit, because in the trailers, we saw the X-Force doing some shit. And, uh, they weren't doing anything. They weren't doing anything at all. And, uh, Oh man, we gotta rewind. We gotta go back to uh, Fire Fist. This little kid who was like a terrible actor, but he was a, he was a good character. Um, uh, he, he instantly Deadpool instantly has a bond with this kid or whatever. Uh, like him and uh, Colossus, I think we're trying to to uh, get this kid to calm down or whatever, and he's all like. And then Deadpool just kills everybody that's part of Essex, or he, he kills, like, one of the dudes that's part of Essex and, like, causes all this shit to happen. Um, <laughs> man, it was, it was crazy. So, uh, how did you feel about Fire Fist? And, 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 and go back to the whole X-Force. How did you feel about all that stuff I was just talking about? Just for like shock value. Yeah. But yeah, and and I was really excited to see what Shatterstar was gonna gonna do. He was one of the first action figures I ever owned, and uh, I really liked him in the X Men animated series when they showed him in the Mojo World stuff. And I'm really glad they mentioned Mojo World, so we could probably get some stuff yes. with that. In a, in a future movie, maybe? I don't know, with this whole Fox-Disney merger. But, yeah, go on, go on, just go, will you, whatever you were saying. Yeah, uh, so it's a very typical comic book trope where you just introduce characters just for shock value and, yeah. like, immediately take them off the board, which uh, I'm also very conflicted about because I definitely did want to see, like, some of the characters in action, like Shatterstar, Bedlam, they did look very, like, badass in their trailer, but then they were just killed off. However, their deaths were pretty hilarious, so I, I, it's, it's not like, I have to forgive it for that, so. I, I think I have the same feeling. Peter, oh. Uh, Peter. Peter still has a chance to become Peter Wisdom, you know, like, he's, because we know he's brought back to life. And, like, he tried so hard to try to save, uh, uh, Zeitgeist when he was in the, uh, when he was in, like, the malt grinder, or in the, uh, whatever, malt grinder, tree trimmer thing. <laughs> yeah, the wood chipper, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> when he was in there, man, like, oh, like, he tried so hard to save him. It was, man, he had so much heart. And, you know, he was the least, he was the least effective person, like, in all actuality, if you were, really, like, going to form a super team, and he, he had the most heart, and these Deadpool movies, surprisingly, just have a lot of heart to them, like, the first one was, uh, classified as a love story, and this whole time, uh, this movie was classified as a family film, which, uh, hashtag F is a, uh, or family is an F word, um, <laughs> It's a cool team. It's it, it definitely gives gave Deadpool that 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 like little like rope to tug at the heartstrings and and that's that's a great part to it. Like besides yeah. all the all the gags and the jokes. Even during serious moments, they still were able to just crack some jokes. Like there was uh, 
some of the stuff like with Deadpool and his baby legs. Um, because Deadpool gets his body ripped in half, and then he has to he's he's growing new legs or whatever when they're chilling at Blind Al's house. Um, and he does that uh he he does that basic instinct leg. When he's, he has his legs crossed and he switches the uh, leg that he has crossed, that is hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just totally flashing cable. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, we gotta get to Cable. Cable was introduced, uh, he's in his future, and his whole entire house is destroyed. He finds, uh, his daughter's teddy bear. Which, Cable always had a little teddy bear on him in the comic books and stuff. Uh, so he finds his daughter's teddy bear, then he starts scrolling on his watch. And he's looking at time periods, whatever, then fucking boom, he's gone like Terminator. And then, uh... And now, now Cable's around just, uh, uh kicking ass. And, uh... Uh, he, he runs into, uh, Deadpool and Firefist. They have these... They have these collar, uh, these power dampener collars on him. Deadpool's now dying because of his cancer. He's got this super strong cancer that if he didn't have a healing factor, um, he would be dead. And also, if anybody else had the same healing factor that Deadpool has, they would die instantly because his healing factor has to work on so much overdrive to fight the cancer. He's actually got one of the, he's got the strongest healing factor that anybody else has, and uh. And I don't, I, they don't talk about that in the comics, or I mean in the, in the movies, but it's, it's definitely in the comics. Um, so Deadpool's instantly like dying and getting weak or whatever. He can't fight. He's, he's, he's almost worthless. Fire Fist can't do anything. He's, he, he makes an old joke, a joke about himself. He's all like, he's like, why, well, why couldn't you be a superhero? He's like, you ever seen a plus size superhero? Cause the kid's kind of fat or whatever. You ever seen a plus size superhero before? And I'm like, actually I have, I've seen a few. But, <laughs> um, Josh Brolin as Cable, fantastic or underwhelming? Uh, on the mark, um, uh, besides, like, the, like, his, his parentage, like, being, like, still kind of up in the air, ambiguous. He, I believe he's just spot on his cable, like very, very reminiscent of the uh, '94 X-Men animated series. I believe. Yeah. Uh, I I feel like that's that that was it, and and I I especially love um towards the end uh where he he says his daughter's name is Hope, uh, like that that just did it for me. Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. Yes. So people who aren't familiar with Hope Summers, Hope Summers. <laughs> Uh, was born after M Day, and M Day was a thing caused by Scarlet Witch, where she just flipped out and erased like ninety percent of the mutants on Earth or some shit like that. So there weren't any new mutants being born for a while. Hope Summers was the first new mutant born after M Day, and to ensure that she stays alive, they uh they had Cable take her into the future and raise her as his daughter, and then she comes back as an adult to, in present day, and she's, uh, she's like the savior of all mutant kind. So, that's who Cable's daughter is in the movies, hopefully. Um. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um. Man, there was this, uh, there was that scene when Domino was basically showcasing her power with the truck scene and everything after the, uh, whole, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, um, the whole parachute thing or whatever, they're doing the whole truck shit now, um, when they're trying to get all the, when they're after all the prisoners that Essex has. <laughs> Your kid is cracking me up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Deadpool is complaining, he's all like, what kind of fucking superpower is luck anyways, it, sound, it seems like it's designed by someone who can't draw feet, and boom, that was an instant funny line for anybody who knows the creator of Deadpool, Cable, Domino, all these characters, um, he gets a lot of, his name is Rob, uh, Leefield, or Liefield, 
and uh, he gets a lot of flack for uh, not draw, not being able to draw decent hands and feet or whatever. And uh, I think they shit on him a couple times in the first movie. I don't remember, but and then this one was just a subtle uh, joke towards him, where it was just all like, "This is someone who can't draw feet," and like the whole theater was cracking up. So they know they knew the backstory behind all that, and uh, just Rob. We gotta thank Rob, though, for creating these characters and giving us this content that we can enjoy. Although, like, some of his art was, whatever, not the best, whatever, he still gave us and created great things for us to nitpick on. So... <laughs> what were some of your favorite, uh, just Easter eggs and nods that you caught? out of my mind is uh when uh right after vanessa's death deadpool goes to blind al's house and uh totally unaware to her that he's rummaging around the house and he picks up that floor board and you see all the boxes labeled cocaine cure to blindness um I, I like that little nod to the first movie where he told blind al like there's like how many pounds of cocaine and a cure to blindness sitting in the house and i think that was just a really cool easter egg yeah. put in there <laughs> Okay, yeah, I didn't, I, for, I don't think I caught that line in the first one, so that one didn't hit me as good. One of my favorites was the one in the X-Mansion, when he's bitching about, like, how come it's only you and fucking Sonic Teenage Longest Name Ever, or whatever, and then you sh the show's a uh, Beast, and, like, all these X-Men in, like, this office room, and Beast is closing the door, all like, no, we're not, we're not hanging out with you, Deadpool. <laughs> yes, um... Actually, uh, two other things, I don't know if you've noticed, but like uh, the alternate uh, Deadpool outfits, um, first one when when he became a X-Men trainee, definitely a callback to uh, one of the uh, Deadpool issues where he's wearing uh, his X-Men outfit, um, that was a pretty cool reference. Yeah, and, uh, and the, end, the other one when he got blown great. up, he was wearing, and then he, the suit made it look like he was wearing his classic uh, 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 white and uh, gray suit, so that, that was really cool yeah. too. From, uh, yeah, from the, uh, Uncanny X-Force run, um, yeah. that was a great reference that I, I cried tears and my wife was trying to console me, she didn't know what was going on, it was a good line, good laugh, good fun. I really liked how he tried to name his team X-Force. Because he was, like, claiming X-Men to be, uh, sexist, so he was, like, really trying to be PC about calling the team X-Force, or whatever, because we're not just men, we're men and women, and we unite, and... <laughs> that was great. That was a great line. <laughs> oh, man, I love Domino. I, I love their banter. I, I think their relationship is, is definitely, like, one of the highlights of the movie. It's just, like, when, when, when Domino and Deadpool share the spotlight, it's, it's just... There was some stuff I thought on went a little too long, uh, like when she's auditioning or she's uh, interviewing to be part of X Force. The whole like back and forth between uh, uh, that's not even a real superpower. Yes, it is. No, it's not. No, yes, it is. No, it's not. I think that went on a little too long. And then uh, the Deadpool death scene when Deadpool's dying, that kind of went on a little too long. Oh, yeah. Where you're like, come on, dude, just do it. Like <laughs> and he's all like, oh my god, it's taking too long to die. <laughs> It's true, but it kind of feels like an episode of Family Guy, like a fight between like Peter and the chicken, and it just gets dragged on too long. Like, who knows? Like, yeah, that, that could just be me. I mean, there there is there is that type of humor where it's just like awkward humor. Uh, there's it's 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 gotten super popular throughout history. Uh, one of my favorite comedians, Norm Macdonald, is like the king of just awkward comedy, and. Uh, <laughs> Um, and it, it, it's, it's making, it's, if, it's, if, it, if it's done right, it's awesome, and, um, uh, and it, it was, uh, to me, it was great at first, it went on a little too long, and I was trying what they were going for, probably, is just fucking, just, just to probably see how long they could do some scenes without, before it got, like, annoying to them, or dumb to them, so, like, or they might have been just doing an experiment, like, let's, uh, you know, you, uh, you can't really knock like those, those are really two of my only nitpicks in the whole movie. Is just those two scenes went on like maybe like thirty seconds too long or so. Uh, so if you just cut a minute out of the movie, fucking boom, 
A plus. <laughs> Um, did, well, did you have any nitpicks, or did you have some stuff you didn't like about the movie that you think could have been better? Firefish. Honestly, they could have gone with somebody, like, just, just his character, just like, but then again, it's supposed to feel like a different comic book, so I understand it, but honestly, there's a longer list of, like, other characters they could have used that would have been way better. Um, but that's, that's, that's all subjective. <laughs> Yeah. So there was that scene. Yeah. There was a scene with the uh, when they when the convoy was uh, knocked off the road or whatever. It's laying to its side or whatever. And I'm elbowing my buddy next to me. Actually, it was the scene before that when you have Firefist talking to Juggernaut through the uh, jail cell. And I'm elbowing my buddy. I'm like, dude, that's Juggernaut in that jail cell. And he's like, how do you know? And I'm like, dude, it's been going on for like rumors and stuff for the past two weeks. And then, uh, and I didn't watch any spoilers before I saw them before I watched the movie. But it was as high, heavily rumored that the uh, Juggernaut was going to be in this movie. And then uh, there's a channel I watch on YouTube called Emergency Awesome. They had parts of the soundtrack already, and they played the Juggernaut uh, theme song that that they play in the movie. It's such a beautiful piece. They played that song. Where it's all like, you can't stop him, motherfucker, boy! You're like, all that shit. <laughs> um, uh, so they played that song, and they were like, yeah, dude, it's totally gonna be the Juggernaut, because that's, they're basically, they, like, they, I don't think they ever say Juggernaut in the song, but it's it's basically just describing Juggernaut, who was actually voiced by Ryan Reynolds, which, which, is, which is really cool. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> so just picture a big, like, picture a big cool. fat Ryan Reynolds face under that helmet. <laughs> kind of small, but all right. But that's cool. That's yeah. Great. I I love how in this one they actually, without saying names, just pointed out the relation between him and Professor X. Yeah. I, I yeah. Read a comment. I, I think it was on our uh, the Facebook group. Uh, somebody was like, "They're brothers." Like, are you freaking serious? Oh. There's people out there who don't know that. Yeah, there's. And to to anyone listening who doesn't know that, they're not blood brothers. They are half brothers. Um, uh, I think Professor X's mom married uh Kane Marco's dad. Kane Marco's the Juggernaut, and so they're not. They are step brothers. Oh yeah, th yeah. They're step brothers, not half brothers. They're, they're step brothers, but they grew up together. Like as children, they grew up together, and uh, so yeah. Pr yeah, and we all know Professor X. He's like they make that nod where he's like, "So you have to wear that helmet so your brother can't read your mind." And he's like, "Yeah, but he's in a wheelchair, so <laughs> it kind of works out." <laughs> oh man. <laughs> And then he says, uh, and then, uh, Fire Fist is like, are, you, are uh, you, you ready to fuck shit up? And then Juggernaut's all like, dude, fucking shit up is my legal middle name. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so his name is Kane, fuck shit up, Marco. Like, that's his, yes. that's what it says on his birth certificate. <laughs> I, I can totally see that. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm elbowing my buddy. I'm like, dude, it's the fucking juggernaut. And then when he came out, I was all like, yeah, it's the motherfucking juggernaut. And and then they gave dude that fight with juggernaut and Colossus. It was a beautiful fight. It was like uh one of the best uh, CGI fights since Hulk versus Abomination. Thanos and Iron Man are uh, still, still, that, that's up there for me. Um, beautiful fight. Um, honestly, I think the one with Angel from the first movie did a little better. Um, uh, again, all subjective. It was Angel in the first movie? Uh, uh, that was the, her character's name. I don't think she had any actual, uh, comic book counterpart. Okay. I thought you were talking about Warren Worthington when he came in X2. No, no, no. Uh, I, if I, if I remember correctly, uh, correctly, Gina Caranos, is that her name? 
You could Google it later, but um, her character's name was Angel. Okay. But that was a beautiful fight scene. Uh, the, the, the whole, like, her using yeah. MMA moves because she was yeah. an MMA fighter, like... Pfft. Oh, nice. There you go. Nice, nice, nice. Um... Man, this... Although, uh -huh. I, I I do want I do want to to interject that uh sticking a, a power line above a uh, juggernaut's a hole was just wow. Yeah, that's, that's one way to take down a bad guy. Yeah, and he's like, that's how we do in Mother Russia. <laughs> <laughs> like Colossus, <laughs> Colossus knew he couldn't be orthodox in this approach so he had to do a little unorthodox things to win this fight he knew he wasn't going to win by his own means so he had to he had to go he had to get into his inner deadpool to win this fight and <laughs> it worked out but we also know juggernaut did not die we see him coming out of the pool at, when they're leaving so like we, he has a chance to come back and be a, 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 a force to be reckoned with and Deadpool three or uh, X Force movie if they make one, um, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> this X Force is a letdown, but I have high hopes for the next iteration. Yeah, yeah, because now we have it's we have a more solid foundation. We have Cable who decided to stay. Uh, well, I guess he didn't really decide to stay. He he wanted to make sure Deadpool lived. So he used his last mm -hmm. charge to reset the timeline after Deadpool died, and he stuck mm -hmm. a coin. He stuck the coin that he stole from him in the. I knew that coin was gonna make some sort of thing because it was the MacGuffin of the movie. Uh, and so, like when you see him sticking it in his pocket or whatever, when he's patting his chest, and then that's where he gets shot at, and boom, he 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 lives and. It all works out, and now now Cable can't go back to his time because he used the last of his energy on his little wristband watch. And so now we have Domino, Dopinder, uh, uh, and Colossus. Cable and Colossus as the X Force, and that's going to be a really solid foundation. You know, like Cable or uh, Colossus is probably going to leave the X Men, or whatever, to help Deadpool form his team, or whatever, uh, because. We know all the X-Men are there. Uh, we saw the whole cast of, uh, of, uh, uh, what's coming out? Dark Phoenix. The whole, the whole cast of Dark Phoenix was in that room. So, <laughs> So, um, in comparison to Deadpool 1 and 2, like, what you, which one did you like better? Did you like them both equally? Uh, I think I like 2 better. Yeah, I think I like 2 better. He's not using guns a lot, but I, I feel like number two had the better fight scenes, honestly. Yeah, I think number two had a better story overall, better action. Uh, we really got to thank Ryan Reynolds because he really put in a lot of his own money for this movie to for the first one to even happen, and it be it was such a success. Now we got you know like, and, and that's something we really got to just praise and stuff more is we we get more actors that actually care about the roles and like and and uh do put in some of their own money so they can actually have some stake in how the characters are written and portrayed and stuff like we'll we will get better movies and deadpool is showing us that like cause ryan reynolds is like a huge deadpool fan and uh, uh he was he was also a huge green lantern fan which was like uh, which, which probably hurts him that he had to be in such a terrible green lantern movie and then he learned from that mistake uh you know like he was in blade trinity which wasn't the, like probably the worst Blade movie. He was in X Men Origins, which was probably like the worst Wolverine movie. Um, 
<laughs> so he didn't have yeah. a good he didn't have a good superhero movie reputation going on and then he's like dude i need to actually do this shit myself and with a team of other people that care about the shit uh, to show them how it's really done and he did it and oh my god i gotta thank him for that oh yeah definitely he's he's the real mvp like he honestly is But I just thank God he shot the pulling Green Lantern like <laughs> oh, oh man it's fixing everything. This I was trying to talk about the movie in order, like you know, like in the beginning. It was so there's so much going on in the movie, and they jumps around a lot from like whatever's going on. It was hard to talk about it in order. So like I did that with Infinity War with my Infinity War review also. Like I was we started out strong and in the beginning. And then I was like forgetting about stuff, and then we're t and then remembering stuff as we were talking about it, because like we recorded it, uh, probably instantly after we saw the movie. As soon as we got back to my buddy's house, we we're instantly recording the show. So like, <laughs> and we tried to do it while things were every was were, were still fresh, but even then we were forgetting stuff and then re remembering stuff. So like, it it gets scattered when we when I do these reviews, but. Oh, absolutely. But so, but whoever, any listener who doesn't care about spoilers and is watching or listening anyways, um, it, it, now you'd have to actually look around for the parts that we're talking about, because where I'm talking about this shit so scattered. <laughs> and, 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 and then the questions I ask you, you know, we're going to go back and rewind, like, oh yeah, I like the, the, the shit at Blind Ale's house with the cocaine and Kira Blindness. Oh, I like the shit at the X-Men. I like the, uh the mojo world uh reference i like the robert you know like, so you're gonna jump around talking about this stuff it's uh so yeah we're not this this we, we talked about the end of the movie and like in the middle of this conversation you know so like <laughs> yeah uh well, honestly the only way they can figure it out is to watch the movie themselves so yeah yeah and that's that's another thing like i don't really care about spo anything spo if anything spoilers do is just intrigue me to watch the movie more like if someone's gonna be all like oh uh, Rick dies in The Walking Dead or whatever. I'm like, oh shit, really? I gotta see how that happens. You know, like <laughs> if anything, it's just gonna I motivate agree. me oh, to that's... see it more. You know, I'm exactly the same way. When my buddy told me about the uh, the uh, the cocaine and the cure for blindness, I sat there for like 45 minutes trying to see it. Like, <laughs> it's gonna come up soon. <laughs> Babe, it's the beginning of the movie. I know. Shh. <laughs> spoilers and, and to, to know that there's stuff like this out there that has spoilers I, I like so i don't have to hear hearsay that's that's awesome yeah yeah oh um, and there a lot of people just uh, uh post the troll spoilers well they just post a lot of shit that's completely wrong and then people get pissed off like oh my god i can't believe you said that about the movie when they're just sitting back in their office or their computer or their laptop whatever phone just cracking up because they think these people just got spoiled or these people think they just got spoiled and he's like no i didn't even reveal anything with the movie you guys gotta go see it for yourselves ah <laughs> uh, yeah the dangers of social media oh my god Jewish. bring back the dark ages of the internet or at least like make a safe space like is there no like a light web i don't know like a light web <laughs> it's, called, like, it's called it's called parental blocking oh no that's the dark side that's, <laughs> no we don't want that <laughs> no the dark <laughs> the dark ages was uh fucking like uh uh, like 300, or, or, you know, 350, 356 kilobyte internet speed. <laughs> dial up. My mom still uses dial up, so I still find that funny. Oh, nice. <laughs> I didn't know it, it existed anymore. Like my, I have a buddy who still has an AOL.com email address, and I'm like, is AOL still a thing? And I'm like, good lord. <laughs> But, Lord, that's like me look, going out trying to look for a blockbuster. That's just not gonna happen. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Oh, Twenty years ago, we'd be at Blockbuster. You go to you walk into Blockbuster, there'd be a whole fucking wall of Deadpool twos. 
Um, <laughs> and they'd all be they'd all be checked out. Like who's checking out the who? The movie just came out, and they're all already. You got you got fifty, sixty, fucking thousand copies, and they're all checked out. Like what the fuck? <laughs> and they're all not rewinded. <laughs> <laughs> Douchebags! Oh god! Oh, I can never, I can never see a new movie when it came out on video. I always had to wait until, it, uh, until that, until it got moved to the other wall, and the, and that wall got replaced with the next new movie. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I love. That's why I love terabyte hard drives. And Korea. Oh, I love Korea. Korea. They don't know what buff they don't know what buffering is in Korea. Really? True story. True story. They don't know what porn is either, but I gotta ask my uncle about that. My uncle lives in Korea. He's lived there for uh, like twenty eight years or so. Uh Oh man! Yeah, he's lived there for a long time. He's he's married. He's got stepkids. He's 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 living the dream out there, dude. Uh, um, I, I like I like Korea. It was a good time. I've never been, but I sh I should go, man. I should go and uh, I've met some of my Korean family, but uh, I I, I should go out there, man, and, and check it out. Beware of the fast food. That's my only warning. Yeah, I'm pretty sure where I'll be staying, there they'll be cooking and stuff every day. So. Okay, good, good. Because I, I, I'm pretty sure if I went, I'd be staying at my family's house. So. <laughs> good time. Any whistles? What? Uh, actually, I did have a question for you. Yeah. Potential Deadpool three villains. Who would you like to see? Oh man. See, this is a hard question for me because I'm not like a hundred percent familiar with Deadpool lore, um, or or X Force lore or anything like that. Um, it's something I've just been recently getting into. I do know a lot of the backstory just from stuff that I've read, and I uh, and stuff that I've seen in cartoons and whatever. So, oh man, um. Maybe strife if we can even get into a strife thing. Um, maybe uh, I know they kind of had tried to have Silver Samurai in a uh, X Men or a uh, Wolverine two. Um, but maybe it's like Mr. Freeze. Like we don't talk about that. Yeah. It's so like, maybe like Mr. maybe Freeze. like a better version of like Silver Samurai or uh, maybe some Morlocks. Like they can like introduce the Morlocks and we could fucking fight some of them. Um. I'm just trying to bring out stuff I know from X, from the whole entire X brand. Um, maybe, maybe since we, they mentioned Mojo World, we can get a, not, a, a bigger nod into uh, what Mojo World is like. Um, uh, there's, there, there's a lot, there's a lot of toys they can play with. Um, I'm not too sure on what I. I know whatever they do happen, it's going to be gold, so, like, I'm not too worried about what they choose or how, and how they choose it. So, like, it's not like X-Men movies, where, like, you're really excited they're bringing an Apocalypse, and you see Apocalypse, and you're like, or, like, Apocalypse was a really cool villain, but the movie was just, like, extremely subpar. Like, if you compare it, if you compare all the X-Men movies to, like, X-Men 1 or X-Men First Class... Like those are the those are the only two good X Men movies. X Men One and X Men First Class. Everything else is like, what the fuck am I watching? Um. <laughs> uh, X Two was good. X Two was okay. Um. X Two was okay. It did have some really good action, like when Wolverine's kicking ass in the mansion, and uh, there was some st like when that when the mansion is getting invaded by all the those soldiers and shit. Um. The really good, the only, like, the best thing X-Men does is get, oh, we could probably have Mr. Sinister in this shit, we, in uh, Deadpool 3, because the whole SX Corporation is run by Mr. Sinister, and he's, he's, was the main dude kidnapping all these mutants and, and trying to, like, cure them or whatever, siphon their powers or doing whatever he's doing, so, 
uh, Mr. Sinister would be probably be a good villain in there. Um, she was pretty, they pretty ki- awesome in the Deadpool game. They killed was, Black Tom, okay. so like we can't have Black Tom. Uh, <laughs> that was weird to me. Who do you think would be in there? Hitmonkey. Hitmonkey? Hitmonkey. Just, Hit Just that's all you need to know. Just check this dude out. He's like Deadpool's arch nemesis. Just a great time. And like, I would like it if they did the movie in a way where like Deadpool fights him and whenever like somebody's trying to help him, Hitmonkey disappears. So he just looks like Deadpool's making everything up. I am looking up Hitmonkey right now. <laughs> he is yes. He would be my number one villain. We is it what is it is it just one word? Is it just one uh, word or is it two? Alright, hit monkey, I'm 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 pulling up some images now. Oh my god, this dude's badass. Yes. Okay, yeah, he's he's got a lot of stuff linked to Deadpool. He's got some. There's this there's this cover right here. He's wearing all red. Deadpool's chilling in the background. All right, all right. <laughs> the gray villain just. Ah, oh, dude, there's a Hit Monkey action figure in uh in the Marvel Legends line. Yeah, he's definitely one of those like underrated like underrated like you have to like read that pool religiously to, to know who hit monkey is i think this character would probably do, like be more of like a sidekick or uh a cameo easter egg type of a character than a major villain in these movies like Deadpool gets a pet monkey or rescues a monkey at one point, and then the monkey like helps him out, like grabs a gun and shoots somebody, or whatever. you know, like it'd be more of like a cameo type thing than an actual villain or uh or a supportive role. I I I, I know what I would do with him. Um, I I just want to make it like just like point out to the audience like Deadpool is crazy. But sometimes he's not crazy, but nobody believes him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because be, yeah. he's the boy who cried wolf, dude. He does all this, sh- all this crazy shit. So then, when he actually is being serious, yeah, no one's gonna believe him. See, he, he's <laughs> yeah, like oh, like the number of comics where he's like trying to explain to people who Hit Monkey is, and he's just like, are you? Are, are you, are you like, it's and, and that's just something that would translate very well to silver screen, I think. Here's here's a, a death like, battle, Hit Monkey versus Detective Chimp. I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> God, I love that. I don't know if it's oh, real. Dude. It's on Deviant Art from, so I don't know if it's oh, a real it's death Chimp. battle. Oh, it's Deviant Art. Yeah. Nobody takes that seriously. <laughs> to Auburn High School, man. I know all about the gothic mm-hmm. hipsters. <laughs> uh, uh, playing Hawthorne Heights in the background. Uh, I take it you're from uh, 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 Rockford, right? Mm-hmm. No. No? Believe it or not, no. No, I'm where are you from? from? Huh? I'm from Guam. Guam? Yeah. Damn. I'm from, uh, Damn, dude, how do you know, uh, 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 Chris Jones? Uh, this, this episode's sponsored by Nerd Talk with Chris Jones, the best, best nerd group on Facebook. <laughs> how do you know Chris Jones? I think I was just invited. Oh, yeah? Nice. I think, yeah, like, I'm, I'm kind of like that kid who, like, found Hot Topic. Like, I kind of just wandered in one day and, like, I never left. Yeah, cool, cool. Uh-huh. That's what's up, man. Forming yeah. new bonds day by day. So obviously, here, like Mondays. Obviously, the you listeners know by now, Casey and I are complete strangers, and I've done I've done this show with so many complete strangers that I've formed connections and bonds with now. Uh, some of them due to uh, uh everything due to Facebook. Um, 
but some of it is d really due to uh, nerd talk with Chris Jones. I uh, we don't only talk about uh, 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 geek culture. Like sometimes we talk about other things, but geek culture is mainly the uh, the what we do here. Uh, that's what I know best. I have an episode called "The Pot Prices of uh, War Machines Armor." We're talking about uh, medical marijuana, and we're talking about War Machine in the same episode. So like. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. All right, all right. So, uh, yeah, we get crazy here. Um, not as crazy as Deadpool. Um, but yeah, we, we um, and every every episode we end up doing a little side talk like this, or whatever, because it's just gonna happen. I do reviews on uh, like the CW shows, like the Arrow, the whole Arrowverse. Um, if you're familiar with any of those, um. <sighs> I just finished Black Lightning, and, uh, uh, wow, wow, yeah. definitely, definitely, like, something to watch. Yeah, we did a whole review, uh, cause, uh, Black Lightning and Legends of Tomorrow ended on, like, the, uh, like, a week of, week or so apart from each other, and so we did a whole review on those two shows, and then, uh, Arrow just ended, so we're gonna be, and, like, Once Upon a Time just ended, and, uh, but Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Once just ended, time. so we're gonna be doing reviews on all that stuff soon, um, Flash is ending tomorrow. Uh, I need to finish that. I'm so behind. <laughs> so, so like we did, we I try to go crazy with. It. I try to re like review any anything that I really like. You know, uh, Riverdale. Uh, Riverdale is an actually really cool show. It's a it takes the Archie characters from Pep Comics. Uh, it's uh, like Archie, Jughead, Betty, Veronica. It takes all of them. It puts them in this, like, Scooby-Doo setting where, like, they're out there solving mysteries and shit at, in their town. And, uh... And, and Netflix is actually picking up... Doing Sabrina. A Sabrina spinoff. Yes, I'm excited Yeah, for yeah. And I love Sabrina. Many of you, my daughter, the Sabrina series. Yeah, many of you don't know that Sabrina was originally an Archie uh, character. She re uh, first appeared in Archie's Madhouse. Uh, I forget which issue it was. My buddy just bought it uh, in April, the, her, the first appearance of Sabrina. Um, but yeah, she was an Archie character. She's not from Riverdale. She's from uh, uh, Greendale. I mean, it's like a, it's like a couple towns over from Riverdale. So, uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch was a, a spinoff of these Archie comics or whatever, and, uh, and they're still in the Pep, car uh, Pep Comics line, or Archie comic. I think it's called Archie Comics now. So, like... I think so. Yeah. But, yeah, it was, so that was, that's good stuff. Um, uh, so, like, we're gonna get a r totally revamped Sabrina that what a lot of us grew up to on, uh, TGIF. Like, it was, like, really cool show. Um, it, it was, but that was more, like, comedy-based or whatever. This one's probably gonna be a lot more, uh, supernatural-based with the, with the witchcraft and all that. So, I'm really excited what Netflix is gonna do with Sabrina. Ne I love Netflix series, like... One of my favorite series right now is Altered Carbon, one of the best Netflix series out there right now. Yeah, I haven't watched that one yet, but it looks really crazy. How, uh, what do they do? What do they, they they harvest, like, body parts or something? Uh, no, they, they, they keep bodies that they call sleeves, and basically, like, your consciousness is on a disc that gets lodged into the, into the base of your, uh, base of your neck. And, uh, basically when you die, you just get recycled. Oh wow! And, uh, it's yeah, it's this whole m murder, th thriller, a crime, uh, drama that's just like so out there. Like it, 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 you're gonna have to pay a lot of attention. Yeah. Oh man, they can't it's just. They can't do what they did in the Jetsons. Uh, the, the, there was this Jetsons, uh, uh, Hanna Barbera DC Comics uh, six issue Jetsons run. Uh, you find out that Rosie. The uh, robot or whatever is actually George Jetson's mom, just with her uh, consciousness downloaded into a robot body. They can't do that shit. <laughs> so they just gotta recycle us. <laughs> oh, it's it's really complicated because the main <laughs> character, the protagonist, is in five different bodies, like portrayed by five different actors. Like it's it's this whole thing. Like it's. 
like like the file the file was too large to fit in one body so they had to break it down and zip it and put it into <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man. Alrighty, I, I gotta do something right now. Yeah? You gotta head out? Yeah. Alright, it was it was a pleasure having you on. Um uh I guess this concludes this episode of Timon Show. Uh I'm uploading it right away so you'll ch you'll be able to check it out um everyone make sure to like and subscribe leave some comments and uh, uh below um this episode was sponsored by miller high life because i drank about four of them during this episode um oh. <laughs> it's, <more> than mine. <laughs> it's brought to you by uh uh amc for uh for movie theaters or a um i don't i don't know this this everyone like and subscribe check out the show uh go see deadpool it's in probably every theater worldwide right now except for china um ah yeah and i, I like to thank uh casey here for coming on uh it was a pleasure having you on dude uh we'll have to do this again um absolutely absolutely and uh yeah, I'll talk to you all next week. See ya.